Have you ever wondered where and how did everything came from? Or how was the universe created? How are the contexts of these creations differ from one another? Which one is right and which ones are acceptable? Hi everyone, I am Rochelle Anido, a second year student of Negros Oriental State University, Shatan Campus, and I will discuss and explore to you four theories of related to folklore, both ancient and modern theories. First is Euhemerism. Euhemerism is defined as the theory of the Greek writer Euhemerus that the Greek gods were created from real stories about humans and historical events. Around 300 BC, Euhemerus suggested that myths might contain historical truths instead of philosophical ones. The Theogony encapsulates the history of certain early human kings. The gods were originally just great men who came to be worshipped after they died. This would explain why the gods behaved like an aristocratic family. Thus, this is a theory attributing the origin of the gods to the deification of historical heroes. The early Christian church fathers basically adopted euhemerism, so classical mythology was explained as were men who had been raised to superhuman or demon demonic status because of their deeds. By this means, Christians were able to eliminate the religious significance of these popular, well-known myths that the gods became ordinary humans. This attitude continues through the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. An example will be the Greek god Zeus. If you would look to it closely, his characteristics are based on the actions of an old, real person. Second is Diffusionism. Diffusionists maintain that all myths arose from a few major cultural centers and spread throughout the world. They argue that all myths have a common origin. As cultures move around, they take their cultures with them, which are why we get parallel myths. This theory certain similar practices, inventions, etc. that exist among different cultures or people are primarily the result of diffusion as opposed to independent discovery or development. Example, a place where the activities of gods are most intense is called world axis. So for example, Mount Fuji, the highest mountain in Japan, Mount Olympus where 12 Greek gods are side, and the Sumerian pyramids called Ziggurat. We also have the series or adaptations of world axis in the Philippines. Myths from Mindanao Bukidnon, Mount Balatukan is where the journey of a soul to the afterlife. Mount Kanlaon is also known as the center of the world, Mount Makiling, as well as the Balete trees. Thus, this is a myth created to make people, including themselves, accept a picture of human prehistory, understanding that you are culturally connected to the people who are your ancestors. Third is ritualism. Sir James Frazier proposed the ritual theory of myth. According to this theory, all myths are invented to accompany and explain religious ritual. This states that myths are explanations for more basic, fundamental religious rituals, a secondary elaboration of rituals. Andrew Durkheim said that the, fun the function of rituals and thereby of myths was to unite a social group to strengthen and cement the ties between persons in the group. Thus, the myths and rituals associated with Christmas and with New Year's and with Easter all reinforce a communal bonds. Also, the usage of symbolical ornaments and prescribed forms in the conduct of rituals. And although there are probably no rituals without accompanying myths of some sort, there are myths without ritual apparently complementary rituals. There originally was a ritual associated with every myth, but sometimes the ritual falls out of practice and the myth alone continues on in the culture, like our hands. Our hands evolve in order to hunt and gather more effectively, but today we use them to type or any actions aside hunting. And these are all acceptable assumptions in ritualism theory. And let's also think that myth does not stand by itself, but is tied to ritual. And myth and ritual almost share common paradigms such as uh, the explorations of faith and religion.
reason. Fourth is structuralism. This theory is a fairly recent development and is closely allied with the research of linguists. According to this theory, all human behavior, the way we eat, dress, speak, is patterned into codes which have the characteristics of language. To understand the real meaning of myth, therefore, we must analyze it linguistically. Structuralist approaches to myth are based on the analogy of myth to language. Language. Structuralism arose out of linguistic theory, particularly the work of Ferdinand de Saussure. There are several different structuralist approaches to myth, but they share a common view that a myth cannot be interpreted in isolation, but only has meaning within the entire cultural system or the structure of myth. Just as a language is composed of significant oppositions, so myths are formed out of significant oppositions between certain terms and categories. Structuralists such as the French anthropologist Claude Lévi-Strauss has emphasized the presence of the same logical patterns in myths throughout the world. Mythical thought always works from the awareness of oppositions towards their progressive mediation, like the intervention between two different parties. That is, we inhabit a world of irreconcilable contraries, such as hot and cold, night and day, birth and death. Now, there is something in human nature that cannot tolerate unmediated contraries. We need some middle ground that will allow us to think and about both contraries simultaneously. So since logic seems like it will be no help, we bridge these oppositions by telling stories. The myth bridges the gap between death and life by oppos opposing a sort of a second life. So this is how um, structuralism explains mythology. That's all for today. Thank you so much for listening and learning with me. Again, I am Rosalind Alido. See you again soon.